Hello, I'm Mario here, from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos, but I'm not just the forms of Mario himself, but I'm the likes of Dr. Mario here that I'm going to be able to actually sort out any kind of medicines, or in this case, the actual, like, uh, capsule of any sorts, so that way I could able to actually fix that up, or anything like that, but on the other hand though, I'm just myself for this point today, so... Anyway, hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mario here once again, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. So, last time we actually did manage to fully completely done with everything in Sand Kingdom, well, aside from the final two missions that we need to able to still focusing on, but um, on the other hand though, I'll mention about more details onto those until the next video, so... Today for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we are about to be returning back to the forms of Wooded Kingdom because hopefully we're able to actually find not only some of these uh, regional coins, but also by the forms of those, you know, still g uh, gathering some of those power moons as well. So even then, though, once we're done with all the rest of those, then, you know, we'll move on to the next kingdom and onwards. So even then, um... Yeah, there's not much else I can say. So even then, though, apart from the fact that we've already just done, uh... <clears throat> that one mission already, which by the looks of it though is the fact that we need to able to actually make those flowers blooming and that way we get ourselves the first power moon right from here, which I believe we can do that if you only uh, defeat the boss at the very end, so even then there's one of the pointings out right away, so yeah, and I do apologize by the forms of the, uh, the lack of uploading schedules at this point once again, just because you know how the fact that, um, it's kind of weird, actually, because either way, um, there's too many Mario videos at this point so far in this year so far, because obviously we need to focus on the forms of, like, several of Mario titles before the forms of, like, whenever when Sonic needs to get back into, like, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Even though he was originally trying to get back into that game, but, uh, he needs to able to actually think about it, uh, a little bit more time before, uh, Team Sonic Racing game should come out. So even then, though, that hopefully you're able to actually come back in that time. And, um, also that originally that, um, Duffy Duck was supposed to be going back into the forms of, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World before, uh, you know, Yoshi's Crafted World is about to be released. But, um, somehow he needs to get some, a lot of time work for him, especially because of the forms of, like, you know, 100% completionist, as far as the, he was trying to be most likely concerned for. So even then, though, um, hopefully he'll get enough time before the, uh, you no, know, Yoshi's Crafted Worlds will be, uh, released at some point. So even then, though, really looking forward to that still, so, you know, you get the idea, so... Anyway, so, uh, today was actually forms of, uh, the 26th of February in 2019, so I believe today was actually by the forms of, speaking of the Sonic Racing game, the game called Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, for, uh, multitude of platforms, basically, for the Nintendo Wii, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, and I believe, um, no, I'm not sure about the PC version, because I believe the PC version did manage to came out uh, at some point in 2011, I'm assuming, or in this case, the iOS version, although I may be wrong, but either way, though, let me know in, a, in the comments section below. Um, basically, that game has been now, f been released for about five, uh, no, nine years now, so even then, though, that, until when it gets to, like, 2020, you're able to actually become, like, ten years old. I mean, Jesus Christ, time really does fly, doesn't it? And, um... As a matter of fact, that, that we still managed to get ourselves, uh, I would classify for saying all four of those, uh, versions of the game now. Well, at least one exception, which is of course the PC version, just because I'm not exactly a huge PC game collector, because of how the fact that I usually use the computer for specifically by the forms of the, uh, the YouTube social media, and especially noticeable when it comes to, like, playing Flash games here and there, specifically Super Mario 63, and, um, especially knows the boy of Super Smash Flash 1 and 2. And, um, yeah, that's as far as I can go for this point. So, so yeah, a few things I want to explain about this and during the likes of in today. That, uh, recently, by the fact the matter is, though, is the fact that Capcom 
then managed to able to announce there's going to be not one, but three Resident Evil games is about to be coming out for the Nintendo Switch. But um, somehow it's going to be most likely uh, one physical game, or in this case, uh, three. all three of them are going to be specifically for the Nintendo eShop. So even then though that, well, because usually because how Capcom always been very... Very curious about the fact that they always try to release Capcom games specifically for their digital media, which, either way though, because it does the exact same thing for uh, Mega Man 11, even though it does attempt to go for physical versions sometimes for the American versions, most notably with the forms of, uh, you know, Mega Man 11, for example, and especially noticeable with the uh, Mega Man Legacy Collections 1 and 2, and uh, especially noticeable with Mega Man X Legacy Collections 1 and 2, and, um, I don't think that should be the case, I don't think, but either way, um, those three games are Resident Evil uh, Zero, and especially noticeable with Resident Evil HD Remaster, which is basically a remake of the first uh, Resident Evil game, but um, I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, the uh, Nintendo Switch version didn't able to actually get ourselves the Resident Evil 2 remake, whilst the forms of the PS4 and the Xbox One versions do have, but either way, though, it's kind of like the same thing for Kingdom Hearts 3, obviously, so... And, um, finally, by the forms of the actual one of the three Resident Evil games is about to be coming out for the Nintendo Switch, this is, of course, the best installment of the Resident Evil series up to this point, since during the likes of From the Past, and that is the forms of Resident Evil 4. So, yeah, this is pretty interesting, but I don't know if I can actually get those, honestly, just because, well, honestly, I haven't really, uh, been into the forms of the Resident Evil series. Well, the only Resident Evil I was usually recognized at this point back in the day was, uh, the Umbrella Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii. So, but that was that only one specific time I just always remember, so... Anyways, though, oh, really? Oh, that slant just managed to slip me off that no end. And, let me guess, I'll take a death. Yep, I'll take my death. Ah, whatever. Well, that's okay, though, because I'm pursuing the checkpoint is right near to the forms of, uh, not only by the forms of that particular character that we can able to control, but Peach and Chiara was there. The flowers in this kingdom are so lovely, I wonder how they grow them. Beats me. I've never seen so many flowers. A power moon popped out of a flower. I hope it helps you in your travels. Which, of course, that might be very true for me. And, um, of course, like always, we got a power moon in the process. So, Peach in the Wooded Kingdom. So, I wonder how the people in that underwater town spend their days. Maybe I ask them. Which means, uh, she gives us another hint, and that is the forms of the Lake Kingdom. In which, I'm assuming, the Lake Kingdom is up next. So, because of that, well, you know, because we're going always in the chronological order, obviously, so even then, though, because of that, though, we need to purposely try to do that. So, now I've no idea why I just keep on, like, failing these kinds of stuff like an idiot, because, obviously, I know it's been a very, very long time since I'm actually coming back into this. I think the last time I've actually, uh, touched this is actually by the forms of, at some point, in uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, so even then, I think last time I've actually, um, you know, touched this game was actually by the forms of the celebration of the previous uh, Nintendo Direct presentation, which is the forms of, uh, you know, the normal Nintendo Direct, obviously. So even then, uh, we'll go ahead and why do I potentially try to ignore that key? But either way, though, we'll obtain a key no matter what, and I was too late for that, so. Oh well, I guess we'll wait for a little bit of a while there, just just to ensure if I don't even lose my progress for this point. Other than, there's actually another way you can able to get to it, it's by the forms of those little swingy bars, but uh, I don't know if I can able to actually do that though. At least this is entirely up to you for you people, so... Anyway, so, oh, oh yeah, speaking of the actual Nintendo Direct actually, uh, recently, out of nowhere, or in this case by the forms of in several of, uh, news and updates here and there, um, apparently for this month, that, uh, not only do we able to actually get ourselves one Nintendo Direct, which it did already happen in during the likes of in, um, the previous two weeks, but naturally we've actually got ourselves our second Nintendo Direct for this month. But this time around though, it's gonna be most likely focusing on Pokemon, so even then though, because of that, um, yeah, hopefully they should be able to bring, uh, news and updates for Pokemon stuff, by the forms of, uh, you know, specifically what it gets to tomorrow, because it did say 
uh, the Pokemon Direct should be uh, be revealed in during tomorrow, but I believe it's going to be on the exact same uh, uh, time as the forms of about a year ago. Whenever you're about the forms of like, uh, you know, in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Direct, back in during the likes of in the 1st of November, they did manage to able to uh, uh, show that on the forms of about 2 o'clock at the afternoon. So I believe it gonna d it might actually do the exact same thing for Pokemon Direct for this for this particular year. And who knows, we're able to actually find out something new, most notably with the forms of the Generation 8 Pokemon now. And even then though, that it will be, uh, you know, to surely to be released on the Nintendo Switch for sure. And I don't know about the others though, because either way though, we'll never know until whenever we're able to actually find out. Um, until tomorrow, but on the other hand though, I'm probably not going to mention about this until tomorrow though Because either way though, because I need to purposely try to wait for that But either way though, that concludes uh, that specific Cooper running Well, to be more specifically, the regular cup, so There we go, that's that done And um, I guess that's about it obviously when it comes to like news and updates here and there because other than the fact that we got ourselves the Pokemon Direct tomorrow, even though it wasn't really peculiar a Pokemon fanatic I will admit though, just because of how the fact that I, w I haven't really played too much of Pokemon these days. Well I do usually still have, I used to have Pokemon Sapphire but not anymore just because of how the fact that well, uh, it's not my kind of thing honestly. So even then though that makes it a little bit more of a different stimulations as far as this has been concerned and um, also same applies by the forms of uh, well I usually also have by the forms of the only current Pokemon game I've actually got by the forms of the 3DS eShop download version and that is the forms of Pokemon Gold and I have no idea why I still have that game I think it's because of how the fact that back in the day that I for some reason managed to able to actually own uh, you know, Pokemon Gold for the uh, the eShop downloadable version of that game is because of the actual special gift if you manage to able to actually get yourself Celebi for, you know, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But of course, it will no longer be a thing anymore just because since we've actually passed by the forms of 2018, so that means you can no longer get uh, Celebi for... Uh, you know, from the start, from uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon. So, yeah, you get the idea for this point. So, there we go. Gemming in the Wooded Kingdom. And basically, the music choice for this is, of course, uh, the actual cloud uh, location. Whenever you're trying to grab some coins or what have you. Or, in this case, above the clouds, as far as the actual music selection is called. But anyways, though, I think that pretty much does it for the normal missions, for now anyway. But either way, though... Um, I guess it's about time to able to actually just to tackle through, you know, some moon rock challenges. Even then, though, that uh, once again, that we uh, have to grab even more power moons as a result. And even then, though, that um, yeah, everything else should be should be self-explanatory for the most part. So, anyway, so um, I guess that's that. And um, again, not much else to really talk for this point. So even then, though, I'm, again, must admit though right away, I do apologize by the forms of my lack of. Uh, uh, voice, especially with my dialogue at this point, just because, you know, I'm still a little bit, uh, tad rusty when it comes to the forms of news and updates here and there, but I've already mentioned some of this stuff anyway, but either way, though, we'll, uh, mention about more details onto that until tomorrow, so don't worry, we'll get to those. So anyways, though, uh, let's get into here, and, uh, we might actually, because of how the fact that we, the reason why we're going onto the Sky Garden Tower, because of this particular UFO enemy, which either way, um, all it's doing this particular mini boss of any sort is the fact that we need to able to actually aim onto its top of this purple weak spot. But it doesn't matter if you either to stomp on it or in this case ground pound it. So it doesn't really matter to you. So uh, yeah, just basically you have to uh, stack as many of those goombas as you can. But as you can see, sometimes my death perception is going a little bit more laggy right there, especially because I have a really uh used to with the camera control sometimes. I'm guessing because of how the fact that, well, if you're not paying attention to that whatsoever sometimes, uh, sometimes though, that I always attempt to get hit most of the time, most notably because of uh, the Goombas themselves. To, well, usually all you have to do, you just have to stack them up. That's all you have to do. But the, here's the thing though, is the fact that you have to do a lot of precise movements. And I highly suggest, I highly recommend to you, for those of you haven't, uh, if you're having struggling, struggling with this mini boss, as you can see right there, I highly suggest you're able to actually pick up the forms of uh, 
you know, uh, the life up part. Because of that, that just makes the balls entirely easy for you. But um, for whatever reason, I just have a little bit of a struggle with this mini boss sometimes because of how the fact that it's going to be a lot of death situations because of how the fact that, well, uh, too much uh, enemies to encounter or especially noticeable with the most impossible uh, reaction patterns and all that stuff. Most notably because sometimes you actually just, yeah, it kills me from the start. So that's pretty pathetic. But we'll try that again. I'm sure of it though. But either way, Sometimes he just really kicked my butt, or most of the time on this particular um, section right there, so even then though. But again, it usually takes place in the exact same area as of how he did when you're trying to able to deal out- Actually, there's actually another way you can able to deal with this boss fight, so not only do you able to actually just, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, to able to actually process uh, the Duma Tower, or you can able to do the easiest method is the fact that you can able to actually use the stretchy onion until you're able to actually reach on top of that, and then yeah, that's all you have to do. But um, the, uh, the the actual UFO uh, mini boss is usually takes about like uh, two hits to kill, which is not that many in comparison to the forms of most of the bosses of the game, because most of the bosses, well, Except the forms of, uh, you know, the only exception is, of course, the Mecha Wiggler. So naturally, that he got, like, two hit points. So even then, though, uh, Innovator in, or in this case, Invader in the Sky Garden. So, yeah, that sometimes it really kicks my butt most of the time. But either way, though, let's just move on to the next mission. So, um, I guess we might as well able to go back in here. Well, to be more specifically, for that specific section. Because of that, I think we should probably go ahead and deal with another set of missions. Well, one of the missions is actually located, and that is, of course, the Moon Shards. But, um, I might as well able to show off those later, or in this case, deal with those later. And, when I keep falling off like that, I mean, that's just pretty... Ugh. So this means I have to go all the way back up again. Oh, great. Sometimes it can be very uh, tedious at times, I will admit though, but either way though, it's because of how the fact that there's no way you can able to actually instantly uh, transport it back to the forms of the previous uh, part you want to get into, or even just travel onto the different sections as fast as possible, but either way, that's as far as uh, memories goes, that's what I can say about it. So anyway, so let's hop off from here, and uh, hopefully we can able to grab... Um, Oh yeah, I should probably mention about this actually, is the fact that since we actually got about uh, 16 of those uh, regional coins so far, so I believe we've only got about 9 more regional coins left before the forms of the regional coins in the Wooded Kingdom will be concluded. So even then though, that we haven't got that far left of it though, as far as the forms of this kingdom is concerned. So anyways, oh yes, this challenge right there. Uh, because of that though, we need to deal with this in a downward slope and stuff. But the best strategy for this is, is of course, using, using, using the rolling ability. But here's the thing, uh, if you're not precise well enough with this particular rolling ability, well, sometimes if you accidentally fall off into the forms of that specific pit, of, uh, specific pit below, where it leads you to deep woods and all that stuff, well, you have to go for all that again if you keep that messing up. So even then, that could be very, very difficult. But on the other hand, on the other hand, though, I must have done this on my first attempt. So even then, though, that's actually pretty swell. At least as far as I can say so for myself, there, you know. But anyway, um, actually, there's another thing. It's one important thing to right away. It's the fact that I uh, managed to able to, for some reason, just trying to get back into the forms of the Kingdom Hearts, uh, you know, games. I actually managed to play this on my own time. But well, aside from the fact that Sonic needs to still need to get back into Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. At this point, but um, on the other hand, though, I did manage to able to play on my own time, which is Kingdom Hearts: Birth by Sleep for the PlayStation Portable. Because the reason why I managed to did this is because, well, I managed to able to actually go for a fresh new file to able to actually start over with Ventus's story again. But this time around, though, with a improvement difficulty, like standard mode. But even then, though, despite the fact that I've already completed that game before. But, um, I have to do it with a much more harder difficulty. Well, most notably with the forms of the standard mode. I was gonna go for critical mode, but that could be very tough, though. Because, either way, your health bar would not be increasing if you managed to be able to choose that mode. But either way, though, that's as far as I can usually think about it, so... Anyways, so, so here we go with this part right there. Basically, we need to dodge a lot of those bullet bills. They attempt to break the blocks right in front of you. And basically, what we have to do is basically we need to... 
obviously obtain a key and that's what we have to do. And we need to hurry our way selves back to the forms at the very start. But there's also another power move which can be only be accessed if you manage to get processed. Or in this case, if you're trying to able to capture that bonsai bill, and there you go. Do you get yourselves this power move? Below break room, breakdown room. Ah, but this part wasn't too bad. However, though, whenever we get to later on, though, specifically where we get towards at the very end, holy crap, it can get really, really tough. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. But either way, though, before we uh, handle with all this stuff, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, actually. Um, I think we've actually got, uh, got ourselves like 57 of those power moons, so I believe we've only off by uh, 17 more to go. Well, at least to be more specifically from never, so... Uh, still no sign of the forms of uh, uh, Cap King 74 just yet, uh, aside from able to actually do, you know, he still really needs to get back into the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild still. But even then, as far as I've noticed, that he's pretty much almost nearly towards the end of, uh, you know, for that specific game. Even though, despite the fact that that game is significantly huge compared to the forms that this game was. Even then, um, well, usually between, uh, you know, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey are still pretty big games or the big titles from that system at the time. But at the moment right now, with the forms of the best-selling games at the moment for the Nintendo Switch, I believe Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting its top uh, one priority when it comes to, like, you know, the best-selling games of the Nintendo Switch at the moment. So because of that, well, usually because of how the fact that it's kind of like the same thing for how it does it for the Nintendo Wii U, that the best-selling Wii U games that has ever existed of is, of course, Mario Kart 8. Well, despite the fact with the forms of the actual ups and downs and what have you, with the forms of positives and some negatives, well, the one negative thing we can think of is of course the battle mode in the Wii U version, because the battle mode on the Wii U version is pretty lackluster to me though. Well, the actual Switch version did manage to improve that significantly, because you know, um, added original courses for the battle courses specifically, and um, you know, you get the idea for that drill there, so... So yeah, um, as far as the actual today's result as a result, that um, I did manage to able to complete uh, Fantasy's story for a second time. But um, on the other hand though, that the next code is I need to able to hop into, which is of course Aqua and Terra next. Well, usually I'm going to save Terra for last because I will say though right away that uh, Ventus is actually considerably the easy mode of the game because obviously with the acrobatic uh, move sets that he's been had, and especially noticeable because of how the fact that his uh, playstyle almost feels exactly like Roxas or Sora, but uh, except the fact that well, his uh, uh, face design, especially with his hair design, is actually looks exactly equivalent to Roxas. Although except the fact that his personality is incredibly different compared to Roxas, but either way though, that's as far as. You know, you get the idea for that point. So anyways, uh, let's head back to the op- uh, oh no way. Um, actually, let me go ahead and, uh, go here. Until we're able to actually just to see of, uh, what the next couple of missions that we- we can able to hopefully try to do. Because either way though, at this point that you know, again, that most of these videos nowadays is gonna be a lot more longer than it used to be, because either way, uh, you know, it, because of that though, we need to grab the insane amount of power moons that as far as we can consider go. But either way though, um, oh yeah, there's actually a great pipe right there, so you then know because of that, let's see what this actually contains. Oh no, I remembered this mission so much. Um, basically the thing is about this mission though, is the fact that once again we need to able to guide the sheep all the way to the very end of that specific circular spot. But here's the thing though, is the fact that this is going to be a lot more difficult, because either way though, um, we have to do it for, well, not only you can able to do it just once, but you have to do it twice, because either way though, there's one sheep which I'm chasing right about now, but there's also the second one, which should be just about to be around around the corner, but either way though, we'll uh, get to that, and yeah, can you see what I mean why I really hate these missions sometimes, is because, well, if you're not even guiding the sheep properly, then obviously you weren't able to actually restart the entire process again, which either way, it can be very tedious at times. On the other hand though, the second part is not too bad, because even then though, uh, because thankfully though, you've only just got, uh, just a stretch line, you can have to do it, but you, here's the thing though, you have to do it with a lot of, 
uh, timing requirements, especially because of how the P switch comes into play. And um, as a result, then you could able to actually just uh, fling him all the way towards that hole. But again, sometimes the actual angles with this particular part can be very, very strict and what have you sometimes. And even then, uh, oh, might as well able to come back for that later, because either way, um, I might as well able to actually just go ahead and deal with uh, uh, this sheep right here. But either way, though, sometimes that some of these missions are very self-explanatory most of the time, whilst in other times, though, that it can be very pretty strict to me, though, anyway. Because either way, though, most of the sheep uh, sometimes usually just, you know, goes in an opposite angle or something. Or perhaps it's maybe because of how the fact that I'm pretty much stuck with the forms of the actual guiding the sheep types of missions. Well, at least for the most part, because even then, there's not much anything else to that. So even then, though, that... Again, it's kind of, it feels kind of similar to how he does it for Sonic 06, uh, you know, that terrible dusty desert. Well, not so bad for Sonic, though, just because I just feel like, uh, you know, the actual platforming for Sonic's uh, dusty desert level can be, you know, pretty, uh, you know, uh, platforming heavy because of the uh, actual, like, platforms extends in and then it extends out every now and then. But either way, though, for Shadow and Silver, for Dusty Desert anyway, that you have to spend most of your time in the inside caverns, and majority of the, the at the time that the levels themselves with Dusty Desert for both Shadow and Silver can take far too long compared to the forms of Sonic's counterpart, but either way, that's just how I think it is, so... But on the other hand though, Silver has the worst uh, Dusty Desert level that has ever consist of, because obviously in that gimmick for Silver that you need to use the actual billiards ball or in this case, a numbered boss before you're able to actually just to go ahead and- Oh, crap, 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 crap! Okay. Whew. Good thing that Cappy Long Jump did actually help me out throughout in the majority of this mission here, so... Can you get into the actual circular uh, part, please? Please? Thank you. Oh, but at least this uh, part wasn't too much of a big of a deal. But the first one, on the, on the other hand, though, most certainly is, though. So, sheep her uh, herding sheep on the iron br uh, bridge. So, even then, now we need to deal with the actual uh, second sheep right about now. But, of course, this is the actual normal mission of this particular uh, section right there. This means we have to go all the way around, around the circle formation or something like that. And then we can able to actually guide him onto the exact same spot as the other sheep went. So, even then, though, because of that, though... Oh my god, I'm actually really just trying to think to myself how the fact that this mission can be very tedious at times if you keep screwing things up. I will admit though right away, because even then though, because I'm still not exactly sure about the fact that if I was actually going pretty good or not with the actual sheep guiding. But either way though, since I've already technically done that before, which I did that no problem on the Sand Kingdom. But on the other hand though, with this mission in particular, holy cow, it just took me a lot of effort. I mean... Jesus Christ, if you couldn't tell already by the forms of this particular time, uh, time length as far, as far as you can see right there, that it always gonna be talking me like, right now it's currently 28 minutes and 40 seconds, but either way though, because of that though, if, it, if I keep screwing things up, it might took me about an insane amount of time right there, even then though, possibly longer, or in this case, damn right luck based. Well, not so much for luck based though, but it's just how the fact of the matter is though, you have to really judge the angle and stuff. But either way though, unless if you want to make yourself a little bit more, uh, you know, just trying to make yourself too easy or what have you. But uh, no, you can't. You have to like purposely just trying to able to actually just, uh, oh Jesus Christ, what do I even begin? But anyways, uh, we'll try that again. And um... Hopefully we can able to bypass it throughout, at least as, as a matter of fact though, then uh, hopefully it should able to actually get this thing done and over with, because either way though, although I don't mind the actual music in the background, it's just how the fact that it gets a little bit more um, repetitive at times, just because of how the fact that, oh come on, come on, come on, come on, no, you son of a- mm. <sighs> God damn it, just put the actual sheep in down into the hole. I mean, oh, Jesus Christ. I am really do sorry about this point, folks, because either way, I think it's because of my skill is pretty lacking in all that stuff, but either way, though, still. Uh, although, luckily, though, these sheeps themselves do respawn, but it doesn't really help about the fact that, that if you couldn't tell from my time right there, that almost gonna be wasted for about, like, uh, 7 or 10 minutes, which either way, though, because of that, though, 
I mean, Jesus Christ, wow, 10 minutes? I mean, just be expected at this point. I mean, either way, though, we'll just go ahead and just accept the actual, like, time length. Oh, come on, really? Really, sheep? Really? Oh, hopefully I won't touch this mission ever again. If I manage to able to accomplish that, because either way, although there is actually uh, another sheep herding mission until whenever we get to the Mushroom Kingdom, um, kingdom. But uh, on the other hand, though, this is a good reason why I'm saving up for later. Because either way, because well, who thought this was a good idea to able to actually just to deal with all these uh, obstacles here? But I do apologize by the lack of jump cuts for this uh, for this particular mission. Because either way, I just really hate this freaking mission. I got to say this right about now, but either way though, because of that though, this is the this is one of the hardest sheeps to able to actually guide in. So yeah, you get the idea. Oh come on! Oh finally! Okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and just insert him into its hole. And there we go. Jesus Christ! That took me about eight minutes to able to finish up the rest. I mean, jeez. Herding sheep above the forest fog. Well, indeed, it could be pretty impossible. Well, at least as far as I can usually, depends on the actual skills or what have you. Which, either way though, still, I'm not very good with these kinds of missions like this sometimes. But either way though, I'm pretty average on that, so. Anyways though, that's it for that. Done out of the way, thank goodness for that. Even though this wasn't the final time we're gonna be doing that, because that honor goes to Mushroom Kingdom, well, again, we'll, we'll get into that soon enough. But either way, for now on though, thankfully though, we'll go ahead and deal with the uh, Cup of Free running mission. But this time around though, with of course the Master Cup. Now remember by the forms of that Cappy Long Jump we've already just performed from that spot over there? Uh, I think it's pretty mandatory if you really want to become first place on it. So even then though, since I managed to achieve that no problem, so let's go ahead and deal with it anyway. So... And of course, since the actual Golden Cooper Trooper will have to worry about, because either way though, that he's the only one he can actually outright run against with them. So, hey, hey at least we can able to actually just uh, uh, go with that stuff. So even then, hopefully we can get from here. So, uh, yeah, you get the idea for this point. So, I'm pretty sure that environments do change stuff a little bit, as far as I'm mostly concerned of, but I'm not exactly sure. But either way though, as far as I've noticed because of how the fact that, for example, in uh, um, the Sand Kingdom, that the actual, like, uh, entire environment, well, usually it retains the exact same environment as before, but this time around though, it usually takes place in night time, which either way though, I believe it might actually do the same thing whenever we get to the later kingdoms, like for instance, the Lake Kingdom, which usually takes place in somewhat of a daylight, as opposed to sunset, and, um, also can be applies for uh, uh, Metro Kingdom whenever when the town is like the actual daytime and all that stuff if you manage to explore it normally but on the other hand though when it comes to like the Cooper 3 running mission well it might actually become stormy and raining so even then though because as a result then you know it gets a lot more attention to it and um, that could be applies as well on um, the uh, plus three snowy wind on uh, Snow Kingdom, and uh, if you do the Cooper Free running mission, of course, and uh, if you manage to explore the Snow Kingdom for reals, then it just goes up as normal. And uh, that also be applies for uh, uh, Seaside Kingdom if you manage to able to explore that place. I could assuming that uh, if you do a Cooper Free running mission, it gets like fully in daylight. But, um, as for the actual normal kingdom itself, it's basically just a sunset, so... But even then, though, uh, you know, and vice versa, though, really. So even then, though, that, um, yeah. Alright, so which mission should we do next? Um, I would classify for going back to, uh... Um... Let's just have a look right there. Um, I guess we'll, uh, just, uh, go back from our right. For that hour right there... That's right next to the forms of that big circular a arena. I'm guessing it's one of those uh, catching the traveling bird mission. Which either way, uh, if you thought that uh, the actual sheep herding mission was uh, a bit tedious enough, well, prepare yourselves. It's probably the most, even much more uh, time-wasting missions throughout sometimes. Because either way, uh, especially because you have to be considered waiting for yourself in order to actually just to prepare to approach for that little shiny uh, boat over there, which, you know, does contains the Power Moon itself, obviously. 
save and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh actually there's no way i can able to do with this mission i think but on the other hand though we can fling ourselves back to where we got into well at least to me more specifically specifically on this area right there now here's the thing about the forms of catching a bird mission right there uh, we need to wait onto the- oh wait, he did ignore me, did he? Yep, I could assuming so he did ignore me, so... That's a little bit of a waste. But, um... Yeah, here's the thing though, that we need to hang on to the tree for a long amount of time. And then as a result though, if you manage to able to see that bird's trying to able to get closer to the actual tree that you're able to climb onto, but then as a result, if you try to jump, uh, jump at the right time with that specific timing, then you weren't able to get your power moon with ease. So, uh, yeah, that could be a lot of potentials there, so... Hopefully we should be able to actually just uh, get away from there. But either way, though, we'll uh, go ahead and deal with all that, so... Okay, for now, that will go ahead and deal with the moon shards for now. But, um, the best option is, of course, the actual onion, uh, transformation, so... But not only do we able to actually gonna be using onion for this mission, but we can actually do another mission as well, because of one of those... Uh, Cappies, as far as I'm concerned with that stuff, uh, we need to use Onion to able to actually complete that next mission because of uh, certain transforming uh, transformation requirements for certain missions. Because we've already technically done a costume change uh, type of mission that we need to dress up as a caveman, but now we need to able to deal with a transformation enemy variety. So even then, though, like Onion, for instance, even then. That way we can able to actually guide him onto that specific section. Because of that, yeah, that's what I can be really here for. So there we go. That's the uh, the moon shards in the forest for that specific specific mission's name. So we'll wait here until these little flower path starts to shine. And then we need to go onto that right section over there. Well, at the same time, we need to be very careful of those little crumbling platforms, as you can see right there. Because again, if you stand on one of these. They start to crumble so easily. So even then, as soon as we approach towards him, then sure enough, we we'll get another power moon. See, even then though, very it's very simple and self-explanatory right there. So yeah, you get the idea. So, so yeah, back to what I was saying with the forms of uh, the Pokemon Direct is going to happen during tomorrow. It has been a very, very, very long time after the forms of the Pokemon Direct. And I believe last time we've had that, it was actually by the forms of in 2017, which it did actually announce uh, not only Pokemon Gold and Silver on the 3DS on the Virtual Console uh, re-releases, but also by the forms of Pokemon uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which some people seem to think they might have been slightly disappointed with that installment, but on the other hand though, they still enjoy the game nonetheless. And, um... Uh, also by the forms of Pokémon Tournament DX, even though I haven't really played that much of it yet, but I will get to that eventually, but either way though, I did manage to got some of these DLC um, packs in here and there, but either way though, that I haven't really played too much of it on it, because either way though, at the moment, I was really into with the more popular ones, like for instance, you know, Super Mario Odyssey for instance, and especially noticeable with the forms of, uh, um, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, including Sonic Mania Plus, and all that stuff. As well as pointing out right away, for when it comes to, like, scheduled Let's Plays here and there, unfortunately, though, that we're originally trying to able to actually go with the Warrior Land series exponentially for this year. Unfortunately, though, that the first installment of the Warrior Land series on the actual Let's Plays department, most notably with the forms of the first game in the series, uh, the actual Let's Play of that is going to be delayed next year, because... Obviously, you know, with the actual, like, still current, uh, Let's Plays, most notably Pac-Man World and, uh, Splatoon, and, uh, also same applies for Night's Journey of Dreams, and, uh, pretty much in every single title that we're going to be listing on at this point, if you couldn't tell by the forms of About section, or the About slot, uh, we need to get those done before we're able to move on to the bigger stuff, stuff like, uh, you know, uh, RPG titles eventually next year, and especially noticeable with another giant marathon, or is that August exponentially? But either way though, we'll find things out soon enough or here and then. So even then though, um, yeah, that could be in so much of it. So even then though, that, still, this is incredibly slow sometimes, even because of how the fact that you have to keep on, um, looking at the map, and then if you can tell already, because of how the fact that with the forms of that, I believe that bird did really ignore me, did he? Yeah, I, I'm guessing he did ignore me for that time. Oh, fine, whatever. We'll, uh, 
go ahead and deal with another mission instead. Which, on the other hand, I believe the next uh, Power Moon is going to be somewhere right down there, but normally you can't able to use the P-Switch as much as that as far as the mission requires me to. But let's do a little bit of a fun thing. Long jump here, and do a cappy long jump, and sure enough, we get onto the actual Power Moon, above the Iron Mountain Path. So, hopefully we get another chance to able to actually catch that, uh, you know, snitchy bird right there, see Fernando, because hopefully the bird itself starts to get closer, and it looks like it's gonna come towards me, and boom, there we go. Whew. Jeez, that took a lot of effort right there, but we got it in the end. So, bird traveling the forest. Sure enough, he did manage to travel through as long as many of those, you know, distances as much as like as much as I can. But either way, though, we are done for now. I don't think I can able to actually finish up with this entire kingdom, unlike the previous uh, kingdoms. I managed to able to do this in one video, but now, um, well, specifically for Wooded Kingdom, I'm actually going to be saving up for the next video because. Obviously, because there's got there's quite a lot of things to do around here. See, so Fernando, because of that, I'm going to save up for the next video. So, I'm afraid to say, guys, we're going to the endings up at this point right there. But we did manage to collect about 23 Power Moons, to say the least. So, yeah, join me next time on Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. Is that we're hopefully trying to finish up with Wooded Kingdom, along with the next few Power Moons, and eventually some regional coins to be collected. So, see you guys then. Later, fellas.